In this video, a meditation on road corridors, the way in which governments plan for the future, community and democracy. Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronia, one of your elected Liberal councillors on Hawkesbury City Council. This video is the second in a two-part series on the government's proposal to put two road corridors through different parts of the Hawkesbury. In the first video, I provided a small history lesson about the litany of misguided schemes that governments of both hues have cooked up over the decades for the Hawkesbury, and how each one, after a fight from the community, was scuttled, and the government of the day had their asses handed to them on a plate. Today, let me be far more specific about the current corridor proposals. This video is also a part of my submission to Transport for New South Wales. All the source documents that you'll be seeing on screen are linked to on my website, and what follows is a mixture of statements and questions. Point one. Both of these corridor proposals are equally bad. It's true that the Bells Line of Road corridor has gained much more publicity here in the Hawkesbury, including at a very well-attended meeting at Clarendon Showground a few weeks ago. But the fundamental problem of both corridors are the same. Both corridors divide rural communities, destroy productive agricultural and equine lands, diminish visual amenity, endanger ecological communities and threaten the futures that families thought that they had by buying homes outside of what I call Ant Nest Sydney. And both corridors suffer from the same deficiencies of process that have landed the proposals on unsuspecting voters without sufficient community consultation, without enough knowledge of the options to make meaningful contributions to the debate, and in a time frame that is far too short. The community has had barely eight weeks to inform themselves and to organise so that they can have their say on projects that may not happen for decades from now. What is the rush? Point two, the river crossing has to be back on the table. We are free to speculate that the government will change its mind about the Castlereagh Corridor and may default to the 1951 alignment and may choose to stop at the Hawkesbury River instead of crossing over it. If that's the case, then the question of an extra crossing of the river must be back on the table. I always believe that only something as major as the M9 could deliver what we've always needed, a new crossing of the Hawkesbury Nepean River somewhere between North Richmond and Wilberforce. And it turns out that we got proposals for two corridors and neither of them delivered. The briefing that Council received on the Castle Ray Corridor actually suggested that it would help alleviate traffic on Windsor Road by putting a new crossing of the river at Castle Ray, more than half the way to Penrith. Bollocks. What a huge political win it would be for the party that redirected the M9 along, say, the South Creek floodplain and crossed the Hawkesbury River downstream of Windsor Bridge and joined it to the Putty Road, providing a link to both the Hunter and Newcastle as originally intended. Point three, why are both corridors roads to nowhere? The Bells Line Corridor is irrelevant unless there's a major amplification of the Bells Line itself west of Currajong Heights and over the range. And there isn't anything like a compelling case for this, given that billions of dollars have just been spent over the last two decades to upgrade the Great Western Highway. And the M9 Corridor conks out at Moralia. Here's what the terrain looks like between there and Newcastle. Mountainous terrain, national parks, wetlands, and another major crossing of the Hawkesbury River, and well downstream, so the river will be broader and deeper. If there's little prospect of this corridor being driven north of Windsor Road, why endure the political pain of taking it even that far? Point four. 
Why is the government's material contradictory and incomplete? For example, why do the government's press releases and um, maps state that the corridor passes through Box Hill? Here's Box Hill, and here's the corridor. They are not the same. Why does the draft EIS reference the M9 corridor as only running from Windsor Road and south to the Hume Highway at Menangle? Why is the vegetation study in the draft EIS so incomplete? I've created a tool in the program Google Earth. The online map that Transport for New South Wales provides is difficult to navigate and doesn't allow you to leverage other geographical data sets and overlay them on the corridor. This overlay I've created allows you to see the Hawkesbury ends of both corridors and toggle them along with other useful data, like alternative routes and the vegetation study. There's a link to this overlay at my website, along with a, a longer video tour of what it shows. All you need is the desktop version of Google Earth for Mac or Windows, and that's a free program. Nobody else seemed to be doing this kind of analysis, so I thought I'd do my bit. What you can see here is the area of the M9 north of Windsor Road in Oakville, Vineyard and Moralia. Here's the corridor, and here is an overlay of the vegetation study map that appears on page 96 of the Outer Sydney Orbital Draft EIS, dated March 2018. This does look a little muddy, but the green areas represent threatened ecological communities, and the hatched areas represent Cumberland Plain priority conservation lands. Even from this map, it's obvious that the M9 corridor goes through threatened ecological communities. However, what concerns me more is that this map is incomplete and misleading. Here is a 2002 map from the New South Wales National Parks, overlaid on the same area. It shows many more stands of Cumberland Shale Forest, areas that just don't appear on the Transport for New South Wales map. And it's not because there's been mass deforestation since 2002. The amount of tree cover in this area has remained pretty constant over the years, precisely because landovers look after them as rural lands. Now, if I toggle the layers, you can see a huge difference. The draft EIS has massively underestimated the tree cover and the conservation value of the lands under the M9. And it seems apparent that the Bell's Line of Road Corridor study suffers from the same defect. Point five. What is the future of this part of the Hawkesbury anyway? The part that includes Oakville, Vineyard, Moralia and Catai. The government can't have it both ways. It says it needs to reserve this corridor through the area because of future land use pressures. But this land is currently zoned rural for acreage properties. Here's the property on the corner of Old Pitt Town Road and Speets Road, part of the Sydney Basin's diminishing store of productive agricultural land. It's also smack bang underneath the M9 corridor. And here's a map that you've probably never seen. The red area is the area defined by the current northwest growth sector. The part that's in the Hawkesbury is this bit south of Commercial Road and Menon Road. And this dashed line represents the outer boundary of what's called the SEPP. It's the planning instrument that makes the Northwest Growth Sector possible. It encompasses a much larger area. Look at it. All of Oakville, the rest of Vineyard, most of Moralia, even parts of Mulgrave and McGrath's Hill. Why stick a fuse in something unless you're going to light it? We already know that large chunks of land inside the dashed boundary but outside the northwest growth sector are already subject to development, like this huge area north of Old Pitt Town Road. Thanks, Hillshire Council. But when will the other shoe drop? Hawkesbury Council will be reviewing its residential land strategy later this year. I grew up in Oakville, and I live there still. 
My heart is to protect our rural amenity and provide a buffer between the development at our door and our agricultural lands and the National Park and the remnant Cumberland woodland that still exists outside the boundaries of the park. But as an elected representative, I have to weigh what is best for the whole community. If there has to be development in the Hawkesbury, I admit that there's a case that it should be in this area that's closest to Windsor Road, closest to the new rail infrastructure, not subject to the pinch points of the river and its inadequate crossings and relatively flood free. I'm calling for the state government to be honest with the community and to tell us if there are any plans to subdivide land outside the current growth sector boundaries. For example, there's this extract from the Strategic Environmental Assessment for the Outer Sydney Orbital. It says that the DPE is considering land immediately north of the Vineyard Precinct as providing future opportunities for employment and industry related to the future Outer Sydney Orbital infrastructure with detailed planning to commence once the location of the recommended corridor is formalised. The area north of the Vineyard Precinct is currently zoned rural and questions that I've asked of departmental officials about what the long-term future of Oakville and Vineyard are are met with silence. Point six, why weren't we told? The Minister for Western Sydney, Stuart Ayres, has made much of saying that the announcement of these corridors was already the culmination of plenty of consultation with the community. Bollocks. Here's a glossy document that came out in 2014, three or four years ago, titled A Plan for Growing Sydney. And here is the only map I've seen that shows, before this announcement in March, where the corridors may have been. It clearly shows the possibility for these corridors to affect Castle Ray, Gross Vale, Yarramundi, Bowen Mountain, Currajong in the west, and then Oakville, Moralia, and Vineyard in the east. No one I've spoken to in any of these communities were consulted in 2015 or 2016, not one. Point six, there are plenty of alternatives. Look, I'm not a town planner or a transport planner, maybe you are, but why has the government placed only one option for each corridor before us and then left it to us to suggest alternatives? I, I feel inadequate to the task, but here are some starters. One, stop the corridor at Windsor Road. Two, follow the South Creek catchment and cross the river downstream from Windsor. Three, follow the alignment of the Northwest Rail Line Extension Corridor, or you could just divert the funds into local road solutions. Point seven, and my last, do not forget the political dimension. I am an elected Liberal, and statistically, most Hawkesbury voters are Liberal voters. This isn't a left-right thing. My last video showed you a long list of the awful thought bubbles foisted on us by past governments of both hues. But I lament that the awful way in which this issue has been handled by an otherwise praiseworthy state government has given a huge free kick to our political opponents. The government has made a mistake in both these corridors. I can't find it in my heart to attribute to malice what can easily be explained through stupidity, but the government simply needs to step back, realise it may well lose the next state election if it keeps this up, and without ego, change its mind. Just as it was mature enough to do on the question of council amalgamations, greyhound racing, or stadiums. I think it's actually the mark of a good government that it can put out there bold ideas and then really heed criticism. It needs to do that now because the damage is already being done. And even if you're watching this after the deadline for community submissions, which is June 1st, 
please let me encourage you to keep the pressure up, especially by calling and writing to the office of your State Member of Parliament, Dominic Perrottet, and the Minister for Western Sydney, Stuart Ayres, and the Premier, Gladys Berejiklian. My name is Nathan Zampronio, and these views are my own. They're not Hawkesbury Council policy, and they are not the Liberal Party line, whatever that is, and I'd love to know what you think. Thanks for sticking with me. Hi again. I'm doing these video pieces in an effort to try something new and innovative in the way that your local council engages with you. I hope that you think that this kind of thing should be supported, and if you do, here's something that you can do. The first thing that you can do is subscribe. You can subscribe to this as a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it as a video or audio podcast and have episodes automatically delivered to the device of your choice, such as your smartphone. You can subscribe to my Councillor Zampronio Facebook page. You can subscribe to the Hawkesbury Liberal Team Facebook page. Or you can subscribe for email updates. The links to do this are either below if you're on the YouTube page or here at the Councillor Zampronio website at councillorzampronio.info. And the second thing you can do is share this, comment, sink the boot in, tell a friend, give a damn. This is your Hawkesbury. Thanks for watching.